Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Good. My name is Mark Keene, up there, um, from the Operations Management and Technology Department. And on behalf of the faculty, we're welcoming you to the School of Management today. Things are going well so far? Yes, everybody's smiling. Uh, first of all, you've all been accepted to the School of Management, right? 12, Sally, 12,000 applications for 370 some odd spots. Uh, how, did, how did you do that? That doesn't, that doesn't even seem possible. Um, and we accepted 22% of the applications that were that applied to SMG, and 33 or 35% were admitted to the university. Unbelievable. I, I'm glad I wasn't applying because I'm, I'm, I'm very sure I would not have gotten in. Um, so welcome. So today, what are we doing today? Uh, we're running way behind schedule, so we'll have to speed everything up. But today we're here to give you a little sense of what it's like to spend a day at the School of Management. Um, this is a typical day. You come in, we give you food and breakfast in the morning, and you know, you <laughs> come to class for about a half an hour, and then you have lunch. So it's, this, is a, this is what you do every day. And the weather is off. I mean, there's some folks here from Boston, right? It's usually 80s, 85, right, around this time of year. <laughs> I think it's low 80s, I think, low 80s. Um, so first, let's go around, if you don't mind. We're doing a case today on Netflix. I don't know if you looked in the brochure yet. So if you would just introduce yourself, where you're from, and maybe say your favorite TV show or movie, right. just to get the whole Netflix theme going. All right, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Alan. I'm from northern New Jersey, and my favorite show is probably White Collar. White Collar? Yeah, White Collar. All right, I don't know that one. So many shows. I don't know yeah, any shows. Yeah, there's tons. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Jason. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and my favorite show would probably be Suits. So I don't know suits. I don't. I don't know anything. They're on the same channel. So. They're on the same channel. Maybe I don't. I probably don't get that channel. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Priscilla. I'm from Burlington, Massachusetts, and my favorite show is Suits too. I'm gonna have to watch this. Suits. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine Baylorian. I'm from Big New Jersey, and my favorite movie is probably My Big Fat Greek Wedding. <laughs> I'm Ashley from Staten Island, New York, and I would say my favorite movie is Devil Wears Prada. I'm Joey McCarthy. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and my favorite show is 30 Rock. 30 Rock, I know. Hi, everybody. I'm Fiona, and I'm from Boston, and my favorite TV show is The Big Bang Theory. That I'm I know. Kaya. I'm from Connecticut, and I love watching the Food Network. I like the food. What do you like on the Food Network? Everything. Is Diners, dri <laughs> Diners Drive-Ins, and Dives, is that on Food Network? Yeah. That is the greatest show. <laughs> and Chopped. Is Chopped yeah, that show? I love Chopped. Hi guys, I'm Marissa. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my favorite show is probably How I Met Your Mother. Yes. <laughs> my name is Dario. I'm from Scarsdale, New York, and my favorite show is probably The Office. Yeah, Office is great. My name is Anna Jacobs. I'm also from Scarsdale, New York, and my favorite show is Family Guy. Uh, I'm Creighton. I'm from Belmont, uh, Mass, and um, I like The Office. The Office is good. Uh, I'm Tay. And I'm from Virginia. My favorite show is Sports Center. Sports Center. Okay. Uh, I'm Irene. I'm from Gosstown, New Hampshire. And my favorite show is also The Big Bang Theory. Hi, I'm Diana. I'm from Hillsborough, New Jersey. My favorite show is probably How I Met Your Mother as well. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm from Long Island, New York. And um, my favorite show is off air now, but uh, One Tree Hill. <laughs> what is it called? One Tree Hill. I don't know that one either. <laughs> Um, my name's Ethan. I'm from uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, and uh, my favorite show is White Collar. It's White Collar. I'm making a note on White Collar. Um, I'm Dylan. I'm from San Francisco, California, and my favorite show is Suits. I'm Haley. I'm from Waldwick, New Jersey, and my favorite show is Scandal. I'm Tim. I'm from Lewin, Massachusetts, and my favorite show is The Office. The Office. I'm Jordan. I'm from Newton, Massachusetts, and my favorite show is Homeland. I'm Will from Worcester, Mass. Um, my favorite movie would be Anchorman. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Hugh. I'm from Boston, and my favorite show is Master Chef. Is Master Chef? Okay. Hi, my name's Sandy. I'm from Boston, and my favorite show is The Office. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm from Ashland, Massachusetts, and my favorite show is Psych. Hi, my name's Kimberly. I'm from New York, and my favorite movie is The Mechanic. I'm Stephen from Bronx, New York. Favorite show is Breaking Bad. That's so I was waiting for Breaking Bad. That's, that's the best show. That is the best show on TV. I don't know what people are talking about. My name is Brianna. I'm from Hanfield, New Jersey, and my favorite TV show is Modern Family. <laughs> my name is Julia. I'm from Wellesley, Massachusetts, and my favorite show is also Modern Family. <laughs> All 
Hi, I'm Brian Chambers. I'm from Sandwich, Massachusetts. And yes, that's Sandwich. It's on Cape Cod. <laughs> and my favorite movie is Good Will Hunting, and I love How I Met Your Mother. Excellent. Uh, my name is Keith Drucker. I'm from Attleboro, Massachusetts. And my new favorite movie, because I saw it last night, is 42 about Jackie Robinson. Yeah, is it, is it good? It was awesome. Yeah. You should totally go see it. My name is Don Tenayer, and I'd probably say my favorite show is 24. Um, I'm Erica, but I go by Ricky. Um, I'm from Queens, New York, and my favorite show is Mad Men. Mad Men. Okay. Um, well, nice to meet all of you. Um, we better get right to business. So we have a case. Um, you don't do case analysis in high school. So this is going to be something new. A case is, in, in a school of management, we have what's called the case method of teaching, which is a little story. Sometimes it's a real story, sometimes it's fictional. But you have a character in the story who has a problem or a decision to make. You, the student, are thrown right into the situation. You don't have all the information. You, you, know, you, you only have some of the facts. And you have to kind of come up with a, with, with a, with a plan of action. So today's case is going to be Netflix. It's a one-page case. If you open up your packets, you should see it in there. And I'll just quickly tell you what my first teacher told me when I did case analysis, how to read a case. You find it? Losing control, it says on the top. Okay, so the way I was taught to read a case is the first thing you want to do is just read the case, nothing in your hand, no pens, no highlighters. Just read the case for the story. Who are the characters? What's going on? What are the issues? Once you've read it through once, and these are very short cases, you'll be able to do that in, in less than a minute probably. Then the second time you read through, highlight, make notes, you know, whatever you want to do. Take a look at the end of the case. There's typically questions. In this case, we have a couple of questions. What are his strategies? What, you, you know, what are his alternatives? What should he do? Start to jot down some answers to that question. Okay, I think they gave you some paper you can write in the back or something. Then read it through a third time, make sure you didn't miss anything. All that, you know, of course, we'll give you like three minutes to do all that. But ready, go. Everyone had a chance to quickly go through that? Time is of the essence here today. Yes? Okay. So let me just start. Ultimately, I'm going to ask you what we should do, but let's get some basic information about Netflix down first so you have uh, some facts to make a decision. Uh, how many folks are subscribers to Netflix? That's a good chunk. So which plan do you have? The, do you know which plan you have? Do you have DVDs or do you just do online? Oh, I think we can do both, but I usually do it online. You just do online? I just do online. Only online? Online? We used to have both, but then we canceled the mailing, and now we just do online. Yeah, that seems to be the, the common story. You guys over here, Jason, online. you? Online, you guys too? So what, what, tell me what Netflix's business is. What, what's the business that they're in? Jason? Right, so we got two, two parts to our business, right? The DVD rentals and streaming. This is folks that don't have Netflix. This is the way it comes, right? You get this blue thing in the mail, blue. You get this red thing in the mail. And I was looking at my tie as I was saying the color. DVDs in here. When you're done with it, you put it back in. You rip this off, seal it, send it back. No postage. Um, you guys are too young yet, but when you get older and all you have in the mail is our bills, I get this. I never even look at the movie. I just like this. <laughs> Somebody likes me. Like it's, it's, you just look at the stack of bills and you see this and you just get really happy. Even if you never, I swear, I, half the time I don't even watch the movie. I just send it back. Or you can stream. Now, where do you guys, that, Sandy, where do you watch? On what? Laptop? My smart TV. On your, on your smart TV? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have kids either because you don't have a TV when you have kids. What else? Where else do people watch? on your iPad, right? Very easy. This is, I used to use my iPad to watch TV, but I had more kids, and now I don't have an iPad either. So I'm, I'm, I'm down to this. This is, this is where I watch TV now, on my phone. Uh, one by one, they're taking my devices away from me. Other folks, is it all laptops, iPads? 
TV, iPad. Anybody watching on their phone? <laughs> uh, okay, so it seems to me that people are leading, you know, are heading towards the streaming part of this business. So that's something Netflix has to think about. Um, if you look at number of customers recently, it's hard to get some information from Netflix, but approximately 27 million subscribers for the streaming part of the business. And this part is slowly dwindling. It's down to about 8 million or so. Okay, so if you're Netflix, let me give you a, a little framework to kind of organize ourselves. First thing, since we're talking about this, is I want to talk to, about something called the product life cycle. Have you ever heard that term before? Maybe? No? No? Product life cycle. I bet you can, you can figure it out right here on your own. Let's say we plot sales versus time. Think of a typical product, either a product category or an actual product. What do you think the, if you look at sales over time, what do you think it looks like? Slowly rising, like plateaus. So rises, plateaus. Drops so that's the drop. You just invented the product life cycle. It's, you were born a little earlier, it could have been yours. But. So what do we call it? We call this introduction. You know, this part here is growth. Here we got maturity. And then, of course, decline. Now, does every product work that way? No, there's different product life cycles. This is a generic kind of product life cycle. There are others. If we were looking at, let's say, the DVD part of our business, where do you think we are? Decline. decline. Looks like decline just based on just anecdotal evidence here. Um, and if you, again, if you think about, you guys are, are you guys old enough for this? Not the movie, the actual. You do. That's why I was. I thought you were old enough for this. Do you actually remember walking into a store and yeah. walked into Blossbuster and got your copy of Ants? And you were very happy. Um, do you remember the first time you rented a video? It was the greatest day ever. Um, so you guys are not old enough for this part, though. First video I rented, I think, was called Video Smith. Was that the store? Do you remember Video Smith? Went to Video Smith. It was about the size of this room, maybe, maybe even smaller about 100 copies of different movies on one side that were VHS and about 100 on the other side, which were Betamax. Remember Betamax? And I thought, this is, it doesn't get better than this. I got 100 choices up here on the wall. Um, but I couldn't afford a VCR at the time, which was about $1,000 maybe. When they first came out, it was about $1,000. So not only did I go into Video Smith and rent, not Ants, maybe it was Ants, I rented a movie, but I also rented the VCR and brought it home. It was about this big. I, my, brother, my brother helped me carry it in. We put it on our 19-inch TV with a bunch of wires, and we said life is as good as it gets. Um, now I've got you know, 140,000 titles on here, and I'm complaining that you know, there's no choice here anymore. And I was so happy with that wallet video smith, and I'm, I'm not happy anymore. So that's one product life cycle. You're right. There are others that do different things. For example, we have something like this, where we have sales and time. What do you think you call this one? All happening right away. Bubble. Sales peak, go up and go down. Bubble. Kind of like a bubble fad. A fad life cycle is another one. Uh, I tried to find a fad that you guys might be familiar with. I have a song about your age, so. All right, Amanda knows what these are. You know Mighty Beans? How many folks collected Mighty Beans? So my son wasn't the only one collecting Mighty Beans. Um, these were, he had to have Mighty Beans. I was assured Mighty Beans were going to be collectible, that they're going to be worth a lot of money someday, because I own in here, for folks that collect magic, Mighty Beans. Um, a moose bean, do you know what a moose bean is? Um, do you remember a moose bean? I paid $50 for one of these beans on eBay, because my son had to have the Mighty Moose Bean. All right, that's a fad. That's, those are expensive because they, they go away real quick. We also have a folly cycle like this. You know, here's sales, here's time. What about something like this? Goes up, popular, falls down. Popular, goes down. Popular, goes down. Just kind of over time. What do you think would go a uh, life cycle like that? Almost said it. Maybe something fashion. Seasonal. Fashion, seasonal. Right? It can either be seasonal, you know, popular use, you know, s snow boots in winter, you know, nothing in the summer, snow boots. Like a trend. trend, fashion, 
and it's actually called the fashion life cycle, typically. Um, Christine, I need your feet right now. Yeah. Put your foot up. I need Christine's feet. What does Christine have on her feet? Converse Alston. You can just put your foot up right there. <laughs> and don't move for the rest of the period. So I, need, I need you to see that shoe for the rest of the period. How many folks have, anybody else wearing? I just noticed, Christine, when she came in. You got them on too, Sandy? Not, not on right now. All right. Um, just to show you how hip I am. <laughs> I have mine too. Did you have the, the pair of these? Yeah. Um, when did these come out? You guys think they came out last week, right? When did they come out? 1917. First pair of Converse All Stars in 1917. Uh, Chuck Taylor, yeah. as you might see on some of your brands, they, on some of your All Stars, they say Chuck Taylor. Uh, that was in the 20s. Uh, popular shoe in the 30s, 50s, 70s, now 2000, whatever we're calling this, 2000 teens or something. So uh, we have life cycles like that. <laughs> okay. I would think DVDs, though, t tend to be. More of this, I don't, I don't see DVDs becoming popular again, right? As I'm just going to go back out and start watching DVDs. So we had things, VHS decline. As they decline, DVDs come in, start to decline. As these start to decline, what's coming in now? Blu-ray, popular, and that'll start to decline. So we have that going on. So think about that. I don't want to go that way. Let me give you this framework to think about, too. So here's what's called Porter's Five Forces Model. So if you're thinking about studying an industry, one framework you can use is look at the five forces that impact an industry. So this is the industry, the rivals in here. Who are the, who are the rivals for Netflix? Hulu. How many folks have Hulu? Nobody has. Oh, that's not good news for Hulu. Why? You watch free version. If you want Hulu Plus, you have to pay. Mm -hmm. What's the problem with Hulu? Ads. They're annoying. Right? You click on Hulu to watch a show. Your video will start in one minute, and you just sit there and count down 59, 58. Please just start. And then you know as soon as you start to watch the show, you know, it'll be back on in 38 seconds, 37, 36, 35. So it's, that's one. Who else? I had, a, I had a trial, and I just didn't think they had that many varieties of the You did for Hulu or for? For Hulu. And I had both Netflix and Hulu for the And you prefer Netflix? Yeah. Anybody else? Any other rivals for Netflix? Amazon is the big one, right? Amazon Prime. Anybody have that? Hmm? Amazon. Does anyone have Amazon Prime? Do you? You like it? So Amazon Prime, for folks, for folks that don't know, is you sign up for a flat fee. I think it's $79 still for the year. Pay a flat fee. You get free shipping on everything you order through Amazon. You get access to the movies and TV, I guess, is it just movies now? I think it's just movies. And uh, you get one free Kindle rental a month for $79 a year. Okay, so we can, we can flush that out a little bit if we want to. The other things going on are new entrants. If you're on Netflix, are you concerned about that? Who are the new entrants? Any idea who's getting into this business? There's a few mom and pop stores like Apple, Microsoft, Google. You know, just some small players, Walmart, you know, Verizon, Intel. Um, yeah, so are you concerned if you're Netflix about these folks? Yeah, I'd be a little concerned. You have substitutes down here. I'm not sure there's very many good substitutes for online streaming or DVDs. You've got suppliers to the industry. Who are the suppliers to this industry? The movie companies. TV, television companies, movie production companies, cable companies. Um, do they have a lot of power? Yeah. So content providers are here. And then you have buyers, customers in this case, right? And those are you and I, you know, us. The threats for suppliers to the industry and threat of buyers to the industry is if they do what's called forward or backward integration. Forward integration means suppliers move into your business. 
Backwards integration means buyers move into your business. I don't think we're not going to go into the streaming business, right, as, as just consumers. Are suppliers getting into our business? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of suppliers getting into this business. HBO, um, Showtime. Uh, if you guys, I know some of you guys like Breaking Bad, some of those shows. What, you can't even watch some of those sometimes. You have to go to the site. You have to go to the Bravo site, the A&E site. Uh, each network is showing their own content now. Um, what about, what are, thing, what are companies like Amazon and Netflix doing to kind of combat that supplier power? Because they have all the power. They own the content, and we need the content. So what are you going to do? Buying the rights to the series. You buy the rights to the series, that's getting very expensive, right? The more people get into this business, the more expensive that's going to get. What else can you do? make your own content. So what's happening is we're not only buying from these people, we're actually competing with these people. So we're moving backwards into their business. And this is getting very blurred. Who are the suppliers and who are, the, who are actually delivering the content? They're going back and forth now. And as you get these new companies coming in, it's chaos, right? It's, there's a lot of competition, a lot of demand for, you know, not a lot of content. All right. So with that in mind, I hope we have enough time. We're going in teams now. All right. I'm going to give you one slide and one pen. And I'm going to give you, what do we have till 10? Use what I need? All right. So I'm going to give you one blank slide. Where's my blank slides? Blank slides are here. All right, so your question in your team is, what should we do? We're Netflix, what should we do? And you, you got about a minute. <laughs> so this back row here is a team. Diana, from here is a team. From Irene to Marissa is a team. You guys are a team, and you guys back there are a team. Here's your one slide. I'll get you your pen. All right, so let's get back together. And we'll only have a couple of seconds for each team to kind of Walk us through their plan. This is Team Anna. Okay. Team Anna. Anna, are you, are you the spokesperson? I guess so. All right, go ahead. Um, so we wanted lower prices on streaming to get more customers because they did mention like in the reading that they lost a lot of customers when they increased prices. We wanted to focus all their energy on streaming because we don't believe that uh, DVDs are going to be anything in the future. Um, we think Netflix should think of something new, like something creative. We don't know exactly what, but anything. Um, they should focus on creating new shows so they don't have to compete uh, with people for content. Are they doing that? Yes. Yes. So Netflix, Amazon, too, yeah. are both developing their own content. Netflix, the number one um, watch show on Netflix is House of Cards, which is their own production. Mm -hmm. That's expensive. Yeah. Okay. Um, we think they should make deals with suppliers, such as getting exclusive rights for other shows to beat out competition. And also, maybe they should merge with other companies. Uh, that way they could just work together to rip people off instead of fighting with each other. So rip people off? <laughs> that's No, 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 that's not what business is. Um, excellent. Um, all those things, my one concern is these companies that you're competing against, Amazons and, these, yeah. and micro, Apple and Microsoft, do they generate income in other places other than the streaming yeah. part of their business? Yeah. Do we? No. If we get rid of that DVD, we've got nothing. So even though DVDs is a decreasing, you know, it's on the, the decline part of the product life cycle, can you still make money with it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the classic example is, is um, ivory, ivory soap. You guys know ivory soap? Ivory soap's been in the declining phase for 60, 70 years. People still make a lot of money selling ivory soap. So you, you want to make sure you have some other income generated. Let's go to Team Charlotte. All right, what do we got here? said like since a lot of their TV shows and um, movies like aren't really that I mean the TV shows you can watch like previous seasons but they don't keep updated like show to show so if they kept updated show to show they might get more um, customers cost money yeah <laughs> how do people watch TV do you guys watch and sit down and say oh tonight's Tuesday night I'm gonna watch whatever does, does anybody do that anymore Timothy you do you do 
I wait till the whole season's over and I want to watch every show that weekend and I'm done. I don't, I don't it's, yeah, or you DVR it. Okay. Um, if all the movies were available for streaming, like instead, instead of DVDs, like, well, not instead, but in addition to DVDs, and if you, don't, if you want to watch it instantly. Yeah. Um, and then we said a reward system or a discount system for like finishing a series, like do you watch the entire season? You can, you'll give me something? Yeah. Oh wow, I'd be, I'd be rich then. <laughs> I could pay for my son's education if I got money for finishing a series. <laughs> and then we said um, to subscribe, like you should be able to subscribe to individual shows. That like when you subscribe to the show, it'll like, in, you'll instantly have it available to you as opposed to like, having to download it or having to get it mailed to you. What about this last one? Does Netflix do that already? If it's canceled on regular well, television? I don't know. We said like it would, could continue to yeah. be yeah. made. Are so they doing that? The, the, um, yeah. What? The Arrested, Development. Arrested Development, which was canceled on network TV, is now going to be on, on Netflix. How are they releasing it? Do you know? They're releasing it all one season. All one season, all at once. So you want to watch it that night, you watch the whole season. Good. What do we got back here? Team Sandy. A quick change on Team Sandy. No, no, no. Change, I know. All right. Give me the highlight because they have to leave. Yeah. Highlight. What's the uh, best point? We wanted to focus on customer outreach. Um, basically, through referrals, give uh, customers benefits if they um, manage to get someone else to offer more Netflix. Um, we want to expand to Blu ray, expand to Blu ray as well, and also hopefully to expand overseas. And Netflix is doing a lot of the things you guys are saying. Netflix, Netflix is spending a lot of time and money overseas. Nice. Fiona. Uh, so we also uh, said that we have to focus on like gaining, retaining the attention of the consumer. So we should, that we could do like marketing through social media with like advertising. Um, and we could do endorsements of celebrities or something. And also like some of the other groups said to um, get rid of the male exclusive shows in the movies and having like just stream them online. You just want to do everything streaming. Okay. Just be careful about that revenue stream. Julia, are you the spokesperson? Yeah, I guess. Um, so we said you could offer incentives. Uh, well, yeah. Um, one of the major flaws is when they increased prices. I remember this happening. Everyone left Netflix. Um, it wasn't even the crazy increase in prices, but everyone left. So um, one of the biggest things they have to do is they have to bring back their old customers and give incentives to them for staying. Um, and I mean, they have a broad base of both customers and movies and everything. So they, I mean, they have the ability to advertise to a wide group. So if they uh, are able to bring back old customers and entice new customers, I think that's the most important thing to do. Okay. Now, one thing you want to be careful of, if you're going to compete on cost, are we going to be able to compete with Apple and Microsoft and Google and Walmart on cost. That might, you know, that's, that might be tough. Uh, they did get back most of their customers, if not all. Actually, they've gotten all their customers back after that fiasco. So that's good news for Netflix. Um, in five minutes, you did what we would usually do in a class of an hour and a half, to be honest with you. That's as good an analysis as I've ever done on any case. So you guys are good. Um, I got to let you go. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Congratulations. I hope to see you all in the fall. It's an exciting time here at the school. New curriculum. You'll be the first group through. If you have any questions, my contact information is up there. Feel free to give me a call, email me, whatever. If I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.